Okay, uh, welcome everyone. This year we're going to do something really interesting, I think, at least anyway. And that is, uh, in every class, we're going to start off doing a number talk. And I've got some structured ways to do that and some things I want you to do. Um, and I've got some more um, sort of open-ended, free-flowing number talks that we can look at once we get good at this. Um, What's, what's guiding me here is, is this book here, uh, Making Number Talks Matter. And I just want to read something from, from here. It says one of the guiding principles for number talks is that all students have mathematical ideas worth listening to and our job as teachers is, is to help students learn to develop and express these ideas clearly. Uh, the second one is, was through, through our questions we seek to understand what students are thinking. So, um, and also point number three, we encourage students to explain their thinking conceptually rather than procedurally. Now a lot of the things I do, uh, especially behind me here with the whiteboard here, I'm showing you different procedures and um, we can get locked into this thinking where there's a set way to do everything and the teacher's going to teach you the best way to do it. Now, we might teach some efficient strategies, but I know myself is that there's a number of ways to think about how to do any problem that we're given. So, Number Talks is about giving you the chance to talk to each other and develop those skills where you can communicate your ideas clearly in a mathematical sense. So um, that only comes through work where you're allowed to discuss different ideas with each other and then share them with the class. So I hope you enjoy what we're doing because from my point of view, this is such a, an important part of um, working mathematically. Can you see that? I've got a pack of cards here. I have, what I've done is taken the picture cards out of this pack to create a deck of cards. And these are large cards, so we can stick them on the board or we can put them on our table and everyone can see them. Um, these are, to some, some degree, my n random number generator. So we can shuffle these cards and we can deal them out and create a number okay and we can work on that number and we can we can try to discover um, everything uh, we can about that number through a set of questions what I'm going to show you next when I jump behind the light board here is some sort of foundational questions I want you to ask and then I'm, I'm thinking about um, some sort of where you're at at this stage of your journey I'm thinking about some questions that we should all be considering and then I've got some questions that are more advanced and as we go along with our number talks uh, I'm hoping to move you through that sequence of foundational sort of at standard and advanced type skills to be thinking about numbers and building up your sense of how numbers work. So I can tell you if I was 100% honest here, I don't think about um, numbers and just trying to remember things about numbers. I work uh, with these questions that I've got for you, okay? My mind is blank when it comes to, uh, let's say if we deal these two numbers here. If, if I wanted to make it 28, I could and create a number that way. Or if I wanted to swap them around and make it 82, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm not thinking anything about those numbers. I don't recall anything immediately about those two numbers. But through these series of questions that I'm going to uh, talk to you about, um, I will work out everything I need to know about 
those numbers and be able to uh, do all the mathematics that I need. Okay, so let's get started on that journey. I'll deal some more cards and we'll pick a couple of numbers and I'll give you give you the questions and then I'll give you an example of how I would work through this and put that in my book um, just on a blank page and write down everything I needed needed to know or needed to figure out. Okay. Now I'm behind the uh, light board here and we're making a video here on number talks and I think during that video I uh, drew some cards and I, we were looking at 28 there at one stage. So I'm going to run with that number and describe what I want you to think about. Um, while you're discussing this with the people on your table and as a class. So I talked about foundational type questions um, where we need to start and the reason I'm making this video is just to guide you in those questions, get you thinking about the questions that we, are, we ask. So the first question um, when we draw these cards what I'm thinking about is where is this number located? Okay, there's my first question. And what I'm thinking about, what, I'm, what I want you to draw on your page and what I want you to remind each other to do is that you know, in mathematics we often draw a number line. Okay. So this is not to scale, uh, it's a quick sketch and we're not going to get a ruler out to draw this or, or anything like that. We're just going to locate zero down one end and I think most of the numbers that we draw will be between zero and a hundred. And we've got 28 here, so where's 28 located? Uh, I'm thinking somewhere between 20 and 30 and its actual position might be there 28. Okay, so that's the kind of thing that the, my first question is a prompt to get you to sketch a number line and um, find out where that number is located. Okay, something similar to that. Now the, the next question I've got because we've got a number line there, we can. I'm thinking about uh, what convenient number um, that might not have an I. Convenient number is 28 located near. Okay, so I've got near there, question mark. What I'm trying to think, get you to think about here is that uh, 28 is very close to 30. So what I'm th actually asking you to do is round your numbers here. So if we just remember the rules for rounding, 5 and above and we go up and so 28 is going to round to 30. Okay, so that's to the nearest 10. Another one, an interesting question I like to ask is to the nearest 100. So in this case, 28 is closer to 0 than 100. So 28 rounds to 0 to the nearest hundred if that's what we're asked to do. So that's the kind of work that comes out of the question. And the final question I've got for you is, um, I'll write it out here and I might use this color here. The third question is, um, what is this number equivalent to 
equivalent to. Okay, and what I'm thinking about there is some other statements, uh, equivalent equations. Can we write 28 as equal to 20 plus 8? Might be one combination. We could write 28 as equivalent to say 25 plus 3. Now both sides are the left hand side is equal to the right hand side so they're both the same that's okay. I want to think about this I've thought about this with addition. Uh, I could think about this as 28 is equal to 30 subtract 2. Okay that's one possibility. I could think about 28 as equal to 50 subtract 22 would be another option. So what I'm, when we're asking these questions, we're often looking for this skill here where you can think about this number as a combination of um, other steps like 20 plus, 28 is actually equal to 20 plus 8. 28 is equal to 25 plus 3. 25 is a convenient number. I'm just trying to get you to think about ways of adding, expressing that number as either a sum or a difference, okay? Okay, so we're going to remember what we're doing here. We're looking at a number that we've drawn at random and we're asking questions about this number to understand more about this number. Okay, so we're on to some intermediate questions here and the question is, it sounds kind of simple, I'm going to put it to you very simply and this is the question here, what are the building blocks of this number. Okay, it sounds sounds a very simple type question. So let's expand a bit more about the types of prompts and the questions that we'd, we would ask. So the prompts are important here. Um, we might ask uh, questions like even or odd. Prime or composite. And depending on those things, particularly well with either of these 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 questions here, we're going to make a list of factors. What are the factors? So out of this we're going to generate a list of factors. And we're talking about this number in a in a the sense of multiplying numbers together to create this number. So the opposite we've got to think about. We're thinking about multiplication. I'm just going to use a time sign here. We're going to also think about division and what numbers can't be used to uh, build this number. Okay. In particular, what kind of remainders will we have? So we've got 28 here, and I'm thinking about 28 now as one row of 28. That's going to make me 20, uh, 28, sorry. And this is an even number. So straight away, I know that I because it's an even number, I can, I can halve this or double one side and halve the other side. So 2 times 14 is going to give me 28. And um, this is just a representation of, of the number 28 using the area model. We're just looking at if we were in primary school or something, we might have had blocks and we could build this. Um, we could... Uh, physically represent these numbers, 
but we haven't so we're just on a bit of paper so we're drawing now I'm looking at this side I'm still seeing that's an even number and that gives me a clue that 4 is going to go in here 7 times to make 28 so um, what I want to do now is make a list of these, these factors so I might write a statement like the factors of 28 are 1 and 28 see how I put them at opposite ends I'm working in towards uh, each both sides here so I'm going to put 14 there uh, 3 doesn't go into 28 4 does so 4's there and 4 times 7 now the benefit of doing this I just have to think about the numbers in between here and they are 5 and 6 and both those numbers don't go in so I've got my complete list of factors of 28 what I've got here is three ways to build 28 so 28 is not a prime number it's a composite number because I've got these different ways of building 28 so um, we're just going to uh, keep those things in mind and we've checked off a couple of things here we've made a list of factors of 28 so um, another way to represent this would be for example we could write uh, 28 28 equals 1 times 28 it's a little bit trivial that one but 28 equals 2 times 14 28 equals uh, 4 times 7 so uh, it's good to write those things down uh, we're just in effect they are conveying the same information they're just different ways to represent uh, this information so I'm just letting you know here um, what's possible and what you can draw I've cleaned the board and I've written out the factors again uh, that's helpful because the little bit of work that we just uh, we just did we know that these numbers up here um, we'll have a remainder equal to zero okay again that sounds really trivial uh, but it's it's such an important concept in math so that it's 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 good to um, write that down and, and think about that those things um, and I said to you I'll show you a different way to think about this um, we want to ask some questions uh, about remainders and I'm thinking I'm looking at this list above here and I'm, I'm seeing that 3 is not in the list so I'm wondering, wondering what the remainders are when I divide by 3 I see that 5 is not on the list so and 6 and 7's there 8 9's not there and 10's not there so um, let's stop there um, and just let's play around with this sort of subset of numbers here because uh, we can access access this through the times tables as, as well when we think about it so um, there's one way to set this up and it's sort of the advanced way uh, I know that students really struggle with um, setting up the division algorithm they don't really uh, are not really confident with it so let's do 28 divided by 3 now straight away we've got a little bit of a problem because when we look at the first digit it's a 2 so we can, we've got to think about this number altogether now and we've got to think maybe use our times tables here and think 
that uh, 3 times 9 is 27. So this is going to go in 9 times remainder 1. There's going to be 1 left over. What I want you to think about is that if we're dividing something by 3, um, we're trying to figure out a way, if we were using some blocks, if we had three rows of something, well, we could have three rows of nine is probably the best we could do. And then we'd have one little block left over. And that's our remainder. And so we've got another way of thinking about how this is going to play out. So we could check out the next number, for example. We could create th uh, five rows of, uh, what, five rows of five, which is 25. And we would have three little blocks left over. So when we, when we write a statement like 28 divided by five, well, that's going to be equal to uh, five remainder three. And we just, instead of writing remainder out, we just put a little R for remainder three is one way to represent it. We could use the algorithm here and stick the five out the front, 28. And we're in that same problem again. We're, we're actually accessing our times tables to help sort this out. So that is going to be five remainder three and that's a way to write things so um, this is probably the difficult part of this question these questions sound simple enough but um, and finding factors is simple enough but doing the next part of the question what blocks don't work and for our uh, for our um, purpose of this video we can't use uh, uh, blocks of three for example they don't work when we're talking about 28 we can't use blocks of five to build 28 okay uh, just imagine these are little bits of Lego um, we won't be able to use blocks of six either six as uh, this way or six as this way. It won't work. So they're important things to understand. Um, and that's why I use these words building blocks because I'm thinking about these blocks as pieces of Lego and uh, they're being used to either Lego or actual bricks of those dimensions that you won't be able to build 28 um, this way. So I think that's important work that you need to do. So um, this question sort of gets us down, working down that path. Okay. So we're on to the advanced questions here. Um, I'm hoping that as we develop this skill, this is where we get to and we start thinking about these questions. Now these questions are a little bit more technical, aren't they? they're pretty short. What is a square? What is a square root? And what are the prime factors? They're really mathematical type questions. So let's, um, when we ask these questions, what do, what do we want to do? Okay, so we want to take, when we ask what is a square, we want to uh, square this number here, okay? Um, we can use our calculator to do that. We can uh, have a look. There's a X squared button there and we can, we can do it that way. That's a way I would encourage you to do that to check your answer. But um, let's use some of the earlier skills that we had. We thought about 28 as equal to 20 plus 8. Now that that's a good way to work here because we can set up um, and make uh, this whole process a little bit easier. So um, we can use the area model and we might set up something like this. We can think about uh, this as 20 and 8 and, and draw 
our little diagram like this. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, uh, 2 zeros on the end of that, it's 400. So, um, 2 times 8 is 16, add a 0 on the end of there, 160. These are the same dimensions over here, so that's 160, and 8 times 8 is 64. Perhaps you've, we've done some work on square numbers and, and you know this stuff. So, uh, we've got a bit of addition to do here. I'm looking at this as 400 plus uh, 320 plus 64, and that's going to be working out at 784. Okay, double check that on your calculator. Use the little button that we're talking about up here and um, discuss uh, how you got your answer here. So, um, the next thing is the square root. There's another button on your calculator and it's no, no coincidence that it's beside it because in some ways these are opposite operations. This is called the square root button here. Um, you can eventually, or if you wanted to do, do that, uh, now you could do the square root of 28 uh, in your calculator and that's going to be working out to be five point something. Now you'll notice this is an irrational number so those those decimals do not repeat and they have no pattern to them. So perhaps you want to round that to three decimal places. Now I'll show you a technique here. Um, maybe uh, with your knowledge of squares we can work this out and we're certainly using skills that were developed earlier on. I'm thinking about 28. I'm going to put 28 in the middle here and I'm thinking about the square numbers either side of that. So 25 and 36 here. So um, let's set this up. This The square root of 25 is equal to 5 and the square root of 36 is equal to 6. So the square root of 28 has to be, and I'm going to represent this as a fraction here, has to be 5 and something. And here's a fraction part here that we're going to set up. We're looking at the distance between 25 and 36 and we have to add 11. So the denominator will be 11. And we look at the distance uh, here between 25 and 28. And that's 3, add 3 plus 3 up here. So approximately, see how I've used the uh, squiggly lines here for approximate, the square root of 28 will approximate to 5 and 3 elevenths. So um, they're the types of things that uh, I want to see you practice when you're doing these advanced types of uh, questions here. And of course you've got your calculator to check, even although caveat here your calculator will not display that answer as a fraction. So um, last question here, we're talking about prime factors and we've got to realize here, hopefully we might have already discussed this, but 28 is a composite number because it's got all these other factors. 28 is not prime. The only, and the easy giveaway for this is um, the only even prime number to exist is two. So uh, 28 is an even number, so it can't be prime. So there's a couple of ways to think about this and represent it. We can use some of the work that we did earlier. Uh, 28 is four times seven. Now four is a square number and we can represent or decompose this further to 28 equals two times two times seven. And then perhaps we can do a little tidy up step with our index laws and represent 28 as equal to two to the power of two times seven. Okay. Another way to represent this is through uh, uh, factor trees here. So representing the same information, just a little bit different. So I'm, I'm thinking here, seven's prime, so we don't need to do any more work. Uh, four, can we can decompose four into two times two. 
and with these factor trees we stop when we have uh, factors on uh, prime factors on the end of the branches and then we just write a similar sort of statement I'll just tidy this up as 2 to the power of 2 times 7 and we write that underneath so um, through this video we've covered a lot of ground and um, it's all driven by the questions and these are important questions to ask in mathematics and um, through number talks what we're doing is building our capacity to discuss these numbers in mathematical ways and I think that's really important so I just encourage you to start with and get good at the various stages whether they be um, the foundation type questions we've been asking the intermediate type questions and finally build your capacity to uh, answer these advanced questions that we've got uh, presented for you here and I've just done my best to articulate how I would talk about these questions and as just as a way of modeling um, what I'm asking you to do okay thank you